Hi everybody, Brian McNichols here from touringplans.com. And this is the weekly news, kind of. I didn't film a news video this week, as you probably noticed if you follow our YouTube page at youtube.com slash touringplans, and you should. We have a lot of really good videos there. You should go there, you should subscribe. And I also didn't really have time yesterday to do our normal weekly Facebook live chat question and answer period. So I decided to mix those two together and I am here doing my weekly news live and then I'm going to take some questions and answers towards the end to all those wonderful people who are watching right now on YouTube. No, on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, sorry, we did this on facebook.com slash touring plans or Facebook page. I'm just used to talking to YouTube, I guess. First, before I get into the news, I want to mention one thing that Angela and I have been waiting to announce. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here for this one, so I get to do it. Both of us are going to Universal Studios, uh, or Universal Orlando Resort, sorry, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure are the parks there, and we are both very big Harry Potter fans. Uh, I have been to the Wizarding World before, but I will be there again towards the end of the summer to shoot some more videos. I just put up my video on the Hogwarts Express there yesterday, which might be my favorite thing that they do at the Wizarding World. Angela has never been there. And neither one of us have watched the Harry Potter movies a lot recently. So what we're going to do together is a full Harry Potter film rewatch. Starting next Thursday, which is um, a date in the future, I have to look, May 3rd, um, we will be rewatching a new Harry Potter related film basically every two weeks. We're going to start with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, just because we're going to go chronologically. And then the week after that, we're going to do Sorcerer's Stone. And then every two weeks after that, one of the other Harry Potter movies. I'm going to be posting the schedule in a PDF form uh, on the bottom of this. We'll also post it on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those places if you want to watch along with us. And the fun part is we are going to do our discussion about them live right here on Facebook.com. So what we're going to talk about is just kind of in general what we think about the movies. I can guarantee you I am much more down on the films than Angela will be, which is just kind of our attitudes about life anyway. And then we, um, we're going to talk about how they compare to the books, the books I am very, very high on for the most part, and how they fit into the theme parks, what parts of the movies you can see at the theme parks, how they look, that kind of stuff. We are going to do it live so that you can join in if you want. Uh, we will not spoil anything in advance, so if you are watching them for the first time, we will spoil everything within each movie that we are watching, but we will not talk ahead about what happens later in the books and movies. For anybody who maybe isn't as familiar with them, we don't want to, you know, spoil any of the big things ahead of time. So, like I said, for all these people that are joining me now on Facebook, um, I'm going to just kind of go over some of the weekly news stories and do this as my weekly news video, although it will be unedited, so it won't be uh, quite as short. And then I'll go through some of the questions that uh, any of you have. So if anybody has questions about any of the news items or just about anything at all, start posting those now and I will get to at least some of them before I sign off here. I will probably only be on here for about a half hour or so and I know I did this without notice, partially on purpose because I uh, don't really have the time to handle you know, a, a, all the questions that we normally get because you guys are always so good about asking questions. Also using a different webcam here. It's a little bit wider than I'm used to. So if you see a cat walking around over here, uh, that's, that, that's probably Zoe. She's blind and deaf, um, so she just bumps into things. Don't worry about her. Okay, so headlines. We've got free dining. The very, very popular free dining promotion, free dining, I should put that in quotes, is starting at Walt Disney World. Once again in the fall, it was just announced if you – want to get a room on free dining and you haven't yet, absolutely start looking now, start talking to a Disney travel agent right now because there are a limited number of rooms at each resort that, can, that are eligible for it. The dates for free dining this year are August 20th through September 29th, November 24th through November 27th, and December 7th through December 23rd. Those, you have to check in 
one of those days. The trip can actually run longer than that, so you could check in December 23rd and stay through New Year's if you want on free dining. That's how it works. The reason I put the free in quotes is because there are no other prom there are no other promotion. I keep forgetting I'm not filming a video and I can't just stop and leave a big pause in there and edit it out later. The, uh, you cannot use any other offers when you are using free dining. So you could potentially get a 20, 25, 30% off room discount for those dates, but you can't do it if you're also taking the free dining plan. There's a little bit of math involved there. You kind of have to figure out what is better for you. It depends on where you stay and whether you would get the dining plan anyway, and all that sort of stuff. And the what kind of dining plan you get does depend on where you stay. Value and moderates get the quick service dining plan included. Deluxe or deluxe villas get the standard dining plan included. You can upgrade from any of those and just pay the difference. Next, we've got some extra magic hour changes. Animal Kingdom is having an everyday, or early extra magic hour starting this Saturday, uh, tomorrow, right? April 28th? Yes, tomorrow. And it will run through June. Now, this is good if you're staying on property because you can get in there even earlier and get in that flight of passage line. Um, you should get there at least 30, if not 60 minutes before, even for extra, even for extra magic hour, because you will have a wait in line for flight of passage if you don't do that. But if you're not staying on property, this really, really stinks because now you can't really get there as early as you would like to. So um, there is still some advantage to getting there early and either kind of hope you get in a little early or at least beat all those other people that are getting there at nine. Short of that, just kind of keep an eye on the wait times, keep an eye on the fast passes. There are usually little dips in the middle of the day where flight of passage goes down, not anything spectacular, but you know, goes down to 45 minutes, which is better, or right at the end of the evening. You can sometimes get in with as little as a 20, 30 minute wait. So keep all those options open. Starting June 30th, uh, Hollywood Studios goes extra magic hour every day, and that is mostly because of the Toy Story Land opening, which is June 30th. Um, starting then, Disney's Hollywood Studios will operate from 8 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. through August 25th with an extra magic hour every day. So that will open at 7 a.m. every day, basically through the summer, which seems kind of crazy for Hollywood Studios because there's still not a ton to do there. But if you get there at 7 a.m., you can eat lunch at another park. You'll have everything done way early. We've also been hearing that the new Hollywood Studios attractions will have fairly low capacities, not good for lines. So definitely get there early, do those first. All right, next up, and I'm sorry, I'm not really looking at the comments or questions at the moment on Facebook because uh, I get distracted enough as is doing this. So I'm going to go through these and then I'll circle back on all your fantastic comments. Uh, Play Disney Parks was announced. This is going to be a an app on the My Disney Experience or a, or I'm sorry, not on My Disney Experience, a separate app it looks like, launching this summer for both I, uh, iOS, Apple users, and Android uh, guests. This is the, the official line here. Guests can play in the parks like never before using the soon-to-launch mobile app that access to, uh, I messed it up, to access exclusive experiences at both locations through activities that interact with the surrounding environment. So basically it sounds, if any of you are familiar with Pokemon Go, it kind of sounds like what Pokemon Go has been doing recently, where they give you challenges and you have to complete those. Um, I saw a Twitter user, and, and unfortunately I don't remember who it was, joke that, you know, buy three churros to access the next phase and things like that, which may not be super far off, but it still sounds fun. It sounds like something my kids will really, really enjoy. Uh, over at Universal Orlando Resort, Universal Studios Florida specifically, Fast and Furious Supercharged is now officially open, although they haven't had the official opening ceremony yet. It is open now. Uh, they are using both virtual line and actual standby line, uh, which we didn't really expect. We knew they were going to use virtual line, but we thought it was going to be like Race Through New York with Jimmy Fallon, where it was virtual line only, and uh, they seem to be, be using both of those. 
uh, Seth Kabersky has been in and out of there a bunch. One of the things he commented on was that the merge for the, both the virtual line and the express pass is very early in the queue. So if there is more than a 15 or 20 minute wait, it, or, or I'm sorry, if there is less than a 15 or 20 minute wait, it really doesn't help you. You just end up in the regular line anyway, which kind of stinks, but I think they're still working out the, key, the, the kinks of it. It's only been open for a couple days. And that is all I have on news stuff. So now um, I will go through. Anybody have any questions, any comments? Um, hi, everybody. Thank you very much for, for watching. If you are watching on YouTube later, because I'm going to post this as kind of my news recap, Later, I'm doing this live on Facebook.com slash Touring Plans. That'll also be where our Harry Potter rewatch series is. So um, so let's see. <laughs> oh, hi, New Zealand. Wow. 3.17 a.m. there. That is much later than I have stayed up in a very long time. So um, good for you, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm usually, if I'm up at 317, it's because I got up that early, which is also troubling. I almost skipped this completely just so I could go see Infinity War in the theater. It's why I'm wearing my, my Marvel shirt. But, um, but I decided to be responsible and do some work instead of going to see Infinity War. So um, let's see. They asked, uh, how soon will we hear about Candlelight Processional? Um, the candlelight processional stuff. the the initial The initial uh, announcements about it should be pretty soon. Um, let me see. I know I just looked this up fairly recently, and um, yeah, over the summer it looks like is when you start hearing about it. The full list of narrators last year didn't come out until uh, October, so. If you're kind of waiting to see exactly who is going to be doing the uh, doing the, narr the the narration, you might have to wait a while. It looks like they started coming out right at the end of June, so we should start hearing. We'll start hearing dates pretty soon if we if we haven't already. No, we haven't already. The dates will be coming out pretty soon. The narrators will start coming out in June probably, but not. All of the narrators will be out until October, maybe even November. Um, generally, the more popular the narrator, the busier the narrators, the um, the tighter their schedules. So they don't always know whether they can do things like this. So um, Angela asked how long it would take to drive from the Beach Club to Animal Kingdom. Not long. Despite the size of Disney World, to actually drive from place to place doesn't take that long. Um, no more than 10, 15 minutes. A lot of it depends on traffic. There's a lot of stoplights, things like that. So it, it can be a little bit longer than uh, just a, a direct to direct. If you're doing it early in the morning for, say, an extra magic hour, uh, you won't hit much traffic. It would probably take, um, I would say, within 15 minutes, you'll be leaving from when you get in your car to when you, you know, get parked, probably 15 minutes uh, because you have to go through the entrance turnstiles and that kind of stuff, but uh, no more than that. It's really not that hard. I've really, really come to like driving around Disney World as opposed. I've I've always been a big proponent of the bus system there, and I do think it's still fantastic. I still use it almost all the time with my kids. Uh, they just kind of like it. It's easier than than dealing with car seats and stuff like that. Although they're almost out of car seats now, but. Um, but I do really like driving around. I like not having to wait for, for the buses, um, especially if you're there early in the morning. You get a really nice close parking spot. You don't even have to deal with the trams. You can just walk in. The exception, of course, is the Magic Kingdom where you always have to take the ferry or the monorail to get from the Ticket and Transportation Center over to the park. That's always going to be a little bit of a pain. So for there, buses can be better. But going to Animal Kingdom, especially if the plan is to get there real early, Absolutely drive, not a bad drive at all. Um, Ali asked, can you get an alcoholic drink at both quick service and table service meal when on a standard dining plan? Uh, I don't think so. I believe the alcohol is only included with the table service. I will look that up as, um, as I'm talking, but 
And apparently I won't because typing and talking didn't go well right there. But I believe, let's see. Um, oh, no, maybe you can. Let me see here. Um, yes, you can get with quick service. Um, this is new for for the 2018 vacation packages, and I'm looking at Disney's website here. So uh, this is official. Each quick service meal includes, for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, one entree, one non-alcoholic beverage or alcoholic beverage for guests 21 and older. Each table service meal includes, for breakfast, one entree or non-alcoholic beverage or alcoholic beverage, or one entree and, uh, excuse me, or one full buffet. Table service meal for lunch and dinner includes one entree, one dessert, one non-alcoholic or alcoholic beverage, or one buffet-style meal. So, yeah, it looks like you can get, um, if you have the standard dining plan where you get one quick service meal, one table service meal, and two snacks, you are allowed to get an alcoholic beverage with each of your meals, quick service and table service. And you can do that for breakfast, apparently, which, um, you know, that's a, that's a thing that I would totally do. Uh, it's vacation. Um, oh, there, I believe it's Steve there. Uh, Steve there answering questions. Um, he actually was just testing out some of the new dining plans uh, in January when we were there. If you saw the videos where we did some testing at Epcot and Magic Kingdom for Rope Drop, and we did a snack challenge where we were all there um, we were testing out some dining plan stuff. Steve was doing a lot of that, so he would know. And now that I remember they were actually encouraging me to try to get an alcoholic drink with my breakfast, I did not do it because I was busy filming videos. I didn't actually have sit-down <laughs> breakfast, but um, I should have. Man, that would have been uh, an interesting video. Don asked, do we have recommendations on a table service restaurant at Magic Kingdom? They've done Be Your Guest, Cinderella Royal Table, and the Plaza. Uh, Plaza is actually one of my go-to recommendations uh, because it's it's a little bit lesser known. It's pretty solid food. Um, and if you are paying out of pocket, i.e. not on the dining plan, it's a pretty good value. But I see Angie piped in with what was what going which uh, with what was going to be my next suggestion, Liberty Tree Tavern. I really enjoy that. That was actually one of my favorite character meals back when they used to do the character meals at Liberty Tree. It is no longer a character meal. It is kind of home style. Think American Thanksgiving style meal, turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, that kind of stuff, which I really enjoy. Um, that is that is excellent. Um, Skipper Canteen, Jungle Cruise Skipper Canteen is really nice. They've toned down the food a little bit. It was a little bit more adventurous uh, in Adventureland. Um, before it's a little bit uh, calmer now, not quite as spicy, but still pretty good. And you can usually get in there without much of a reservation, which is always nice. Uh, John points out my Liverpool cup. Yes, I am a, uh, I am an, a Liverpool supporter, a very happy one after their champions league performances. Although I could have done without those two late Roma goals. Um, D asked if we've been to Ale and Compass since the refurb. I haven't personally. Our dining critic Tessa has, um, and and I, she wasn't uh, super uh, into it. Uh, she found it a little bit on the bland side in in almost every way. It, the, it was just too bad. The the Captain's Grill that used to be there. This is at uh, excuse me. This is at the uh, Yacht Club, uh, the the table service. They redid the. Bar, the bar that was called the Ale and Compass into now the Ale and Compass Lounge, and they redid the restaurant that was Captain's Grill into the Ale and Compass Restaurant. Um, basically, she said that it is fine, it's nothing special, um, but it's priced a little bit too high for fine, um, you know, and, and there are other options to go to if you are there. If you like seafood, Cape May is, is very good. Honestly, even just the Cruise Cup Lounge, the bar there has has decent food. Um, the there's a couple different options in the Swan and Dolphin right there, but um, but it's apparently okay. Uh, I may be staying at the Beach Club one of the times I, I go, so I might try to pop in there and check it out myself because um, I haven't been there yet. Let's see. David and Jacqueline say they are booked for Port Orleans Riverside in September. Why are they no longer included in the free dining? Um, I don't know. 
what is and is not included in the free dining seems to change uh, basically all the time. It is, uh, it is actually a lot less restrictive this time than it was last year when they did it. There was a lot more, um, there was a lot more hotels that were not included, but, um, but this time it is odd. They, neither Port Orleans Resort is included. It is the cabins at Fort Wilderness, Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, um, all, of the, all of the value resort hotels, except the Little Mermaid rooms at Art of Animation. That's a common thing that they leave out. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, the deluxe resorts that are included are Animal Kingdom, Beach Club, Boardwalk, Grand Floridian, and Yacht Club. Um, so no Wilderness Lodge there, which I find kind of odd. No Polynesian, no Contemporary. Um, the one, what they left out is, is odd. I couldn't explain why. Uh, it used to be that um, the French uh, French Quarter, Portland's French Quarter, wasn't included in a lot of stuff. Now they've started expanding that into Riverside for reasons I, I don't exactly know. French Quarter, we always kind of assumed it was because it was A, popular, and B, a little bit smaller, than, well, a lot smaller than the other three moderate resorts. So there were just fewer rooms. But now, um, now I don't know. Uh, I, I guess my guess is probably just because they're more popular. They're trying the, the reason one thing you have to remember with free dining and with all promotions is that they do these promotions when the parks aren't as crowded. So even though free dining is an incredibly popular promotion, they do it in the fall because that's when fewer people are there. If they didn't have to entice people to be there, they wouldn't do something like free dining. Uh, so the same can be inferred into their hotel choices. They are trying to get people to stay in rooms that maybe aren't as popular. So uh, maybe they're, they're Port Orleans. And you know what, right now, because of construction at Caribbean Beach, especially Caribbean Beach and also at Coronado, um, I could see why people aren't as as eager to stay there so uh, that makes a little bit ex of sense why like wilderness lodge is not included but animal kingdom is um, that doesn't make as much sense to me um let's see ali asked what is the best character dinner in my opinion tusker house uh tusker house is my favorite of the character meals right now uh, that is in the africa section of animal kingdom i think um the food there, because, uh, you know, with character meals, the first thing you have to choose between is the characters. Uh, obviously, if there are certain characters that you or your children want to see, then you should just choose those meals regardless. If you love Winnie the Pooh and want to meet, you know, those characters, you have to do Crystal Palace. It's the only choice. If you love Lilo and Stitch, you have to do Ohana for breakfast. Um that's the only time it's a character meal. And we have, my son used to love Stitch. So we've done the Ohana breakfast several times for that reason. But uh, all else being equal, and you're going to pick based on food and atmosphere. I like Tusker House a lot. I think the food is some of the best food there. Um, the food at character meals tends to be mediocre. I think it is actually above average at Tusker House. Um, I think the, um, one of my... Uh, I'm trying to think. The the food actually at Akershus, the princess meal in Norway, I like. It's a little bit odd. They try to do kind of a halfway to authentic, uh, you know, Norwegian, Scandinavian um, with some of the dishes. And I like that about it. But um, that's definitely, you know, hit or miss depending on, on what you get. Um I'm trying to think for dinner. Garden Grill, also at Epcot in the Land Pavilion. I like their food. Some people don't. Um, that is also one where you'll get, you know, turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes, um, which, as you can tell, is something that I like. The food there is it tends to be fresher than than other places because they do pull a lot of it from the Land Pavilion. And the Garden Grill restaurant rotates slightly. So um, you get to see some, you know, some of the scenery from living with the land, the, the ride. So uh, that's very cool. I like that. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing any. I don't think so. Um, I think those are the ones that, that would probably be my favorite based on, on food anyway. 
Um, let's see. Holly says they're they are where am I? Soon to be family of five. Congratulations. Uh, they've been looking into renting DVC points. Any experience and or tips for that? Yes. Uh, I've rented DVC points a few times. I think I've always rented through David's DVC rental. I've had really good luck with them. Um, there are a few others that, that will get good reviews. Uh, if you're thinking of, of using a service like that, you know, you just check around. They've, they've all been used by a bunch of people. Um, you know, check some forum posts, things like that. You'll, you'll see. Um, I like it. it. It's definitely cheaper than, than paying for a DVC room through Disney. DVC is the Disney vacation club. So um, owners get points to use. If they're not using all of them, they can, uh, basically sell them off. A, a site like David's DVC Rentals is, acts as a broker between the, the people with the points and the people wanting to buy the points. You can go on various forums and buy points directly from DVC owners. Uh, that is a little bit more work and a little bit more risk. A, a site like David's DVC will you know, um, at, at least guarantee the service for you. Um, but you will pay a little bit more for that service, obviously, but not as much as you would through Disney. The downside of it is that, at least with David's, you have to pay uh, everything up front. When you make the reservation, you have to pay in full, and I believe it is non-refundable. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it is non-refundable also. So you have to be pretty sure you're going to do it when you do it. Um, but it, it is it is nice. Uh, you you aren't going to get your choice of places. You kind of have to just take what is available at the time. Um, but I've I've had good luck. We've done it two or three times. I think we stayed at you know we stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge with a Savannah view for a pretty reasonable price. Um, one thing that that I don't love with the DVC rooms in general is that uh, unless you're getting a two bedroom or a grand villa, which is the three bedroom they only have one real bed in them. Uh, everything else is a sofa bed. Even with a one bedroom, uh, the, that bedroom will have generally a king size bed in it. And then the living room will have, you know, a sofa bed, a uh, fold out chair, sometimes two sofa beds, depending on the rooms. So, um, you know, for kids that tends to not matter so much, but I always find it a little bit annoying that they can't just put two beds in like a studio room, but maybe that's just me. Um, let's see. Kimberly asks, any tips for the first night of Mickey's not so scary Halloween party? Visited Walt Disney World many times, but first time for a special event. I'll actually be there, um, for the first Mickey's not so scary Halloween party this year, which is August 17th, which sounds incredible to say. I will be there shooting a video all about the 2018, uh, not so scary Halloween party. Basically what I would say for any of the, the parties like that is focus on the things that aren't available the rest of the time. A lot of the rides will be open. And if there are rides that you really want to go on or haven't been able to get on because of long lines, something like Seven Doors Mine Train, for instance, by all means, you know, I'm not telling you don't do it at all. But what's really nice about the parties and, you know, it, what you're paying for, for the most part, is the the unique things the trick-or-treating the character meets the parade the fireworks the booty you parade and the hollow wishes fireworks are quite possibly the best parade definitely the best parade i think and quite possibly the best fireworks that disney does so 100 percent see those if there are any characters there are always rare characters out jack skellington will be out seven dwarves will be out um you, you know Go see those and see those early. Uh, they will get long lines. For the Christmas party, I did a video, um, and I, think, I believe it was Jack Skellington had like an hour and a half line at one point. Um, you don't want to spend your time doing that if you don't have to. So do those early. Um, if you can stay late and see there are two parades for every party, if you can stay late and see the later of the parade, the parades that will be much much less busy than the first parade will be so i'd recommend that other than that just enjoy the atmosphere um have fun uh like i said you know do characters first see the parade see the fireworks 
trick or treat in between there towards the end of the night. That's a great time to ride rides is right towards the end of the night. There won't be any lines for them. Uh, Kelly asked best Christmas party for 2018. I didn't do those, but that, that blog post and video quite yet. Um, I just got the numbers for it uh, actually today because I've been unfortunately very busy, but that will be coming out. Um, I am going to guess Tuesday Christmas parties, uh, Tuesday, any parties are always good early in the year is good. So, um, if there is a Tuesday in say like early to mid November, or early December, those will be will be pretty good parties to go to. You want to avoid anything around Thanksgiving. They won't do Christmas parties the week of Thanksgiving, but the last one before that and the first one right after will be a little bit busier. And of course, the closer you get to Christmas, the busier they will be. But um, look for those very, very soon. Um, Harley asked, have, we, have I eaten at Katsura Grill in Epcot? Uh, I have. In fact, I just ate there when I was there in... Uh, what was it, January? Uh, the uh, work trips tend to run together, but I believe it was January. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty good. It is um, not what I would consider 100% authentic Japanese by any means, but um, I had a beef and noodle bowl that was that was pretty good. Again, above average. Um, Epcot is a great place to hunt for unique quick service. I like Katsura quite a bit. In fact, um, I didn't eat my lunch yet and my stomach is starting to growl a little bit thinking about it. Um, I also really, really like Tangerine Cafe in Morocco, um, which is, you know, shawarma and, and things. I, I Again, it's like Katsura Grill. It is part of the way to authentic Moroccan, but not quite there. Uh, I personally would like to see them be more adventurous with that stuff, but I understand why they don't. And um, so those are the two, I, if, if asked, those are the two I would probably recommend for uh, something a little bit different that maybe you don't find in your hometown, depending on where you live. Um, if you live in, you know, New York City, obviously you're going to find all of these places there too. But uh, where I live in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, we do have uh, some half decent uh, Japanese places around here. We do not have any place that uh, serves shawarma. So uh, that might be why I enjoy there. Um, uh, Don said they already bought their tickets for Sunday, December 2nd for the, the Christmas party. No, you know what? The, it, it's all relative when you're talking about, about those. The, um, the parade, the first parade is always going to be kind of busy because everybody wants to see it. But um, you know, I was there for the first Christmas party last year and I wandered up in town square about 10 or 15 minutes before it started and got a, a spot right on the street. Um, you know, it, it's not that big a deal. The rides, even the busiest of rides are only going to have 30 minute waits. The character meets are always going to be busy. No matter what party you go to, you still have to get to the popular ones early. Um, you know, none of the, the Halloween or Christmas parties are going to feel crazy crowded just because they don't let that many people into the park. They only let, you know, we're not exactly sure of the numbers, but somewhere in the 30,000 people or so range, Magic Kingdom capacity is somewhere like 70 or 80,000. So it's never, ever going to feel like a nine or 10 crowd calendar day, um, no matter when you go. And it's always going to feel a little busy around parade time, fireworks time, because everybody that is in the park is going to want to see those. So, um, you know, don't worry. It's, it's still not going to be that bad. It won't be empty. None of them are empty, but it's not going to be like, you know, a, a not going to be super claustrophobic, except maybe around, you know, firework time. Uh, Gina asked, how do I get from Art of Animation to Boardwalk for an 8 a.m. Bon Voyage breakfast? Bon Voyage breakfast, actually, speaking of character meals, uh, I did that last summer with, with the family, and we really, really enjoyed that. It is uh, Ariel and Prince Eric and Rapunzel and Eugene Flynn Ryder. And um, that was really fun. Flynn was amazing. Uh, we I have a very funny video of him teaching my son how to smolder. Um, my son was, uh, what, six at the time? Still six. Was six then also. It wasn't that long ago. And uh, But the food is very good. It is held at Trattoria Al Forno on the boardwalk. Um, the easiest way is going to be you know, to, to drive or take a taxi or a rideshare service, an Uber or Lyft. Um, understandably, you, you're not always going to be able to do that. It, 
if the buses are running to Hollywood Studios, um, and if you're going anytime over the summer, they will be because Hollywood Studios has extra magic hours starting at 7 a.m. all summer. Uh, if the buses are running to Hollywood Studios, that's probably going to be the easiest way is to take a bus to Hollywood Studios and then either walk to Boardwalk or take the Friendship Boat to Boardwalk, uh, especially if you're taking the bus and then the Friendship Boat. I would leave yourself, you know, 45 minutes, uh, maybe even an hour to do that because you just don't know how long you're going to have to wait for that bus and the Friendship Boat. Um, if you're walking, you can cut a little bit out of that. It's, it's probably a 15 to 20 minute walk from uh, where you would get the bus at, at Hollywood Studios to get to the boardwalk. Um, it's, uh, I would say, I, I'm not sure offhand, three quarters of a mile to a mile. It is a, basically flat. It is not a bad walk to do. Uh, it's what what I would do. In fact, we made the kids walk to Hollywood Studios after we ate at Trattoria El Forno. So um, I, um, I'm looking just to see how, uh, how long it is. But um, that would be your, your best bet, I would say. If you take a... Um, if you take the bus to Epcot, you would have to go through the park to get out the International Gateway, which you're not going to be able to do that early. And if you, um, uh, and other than that, you would have to take a double bus, either a bus to, you know, Magic Kingdom or uh, Animal Kingdom, and then switch to a bus to Boardwalk. That could be very, um, it could be very hard to do that early in the morning. So if you, um, if you don't want to take a taxi or something like that, then Hollywood Studios, and then, um, you know, I would recommend walking. But um, let me see here. Where are we? There we are. Um, uh, Google Maps won't let me take the path all the way up to, uh, to there. But I'm going to say it's uh, about, yeah, three quarters to a mile. I was pretty close on that, actually. Um, it, it's one of those things that's just, it's kind of a, annoying to get to. I've done it. I didn't do it for that one. I've done it for Cape May breakfast at Beach Club uh, where we had to do that, take the bus and then the boat. And it takes a while. Um, it's it's uh, rough. Now, Stephen asked a question that I occasionally get. What is my job? Um, that is a good question. Um, I, I do kind of a lot for Touring Plans. I do a lot of our video work, which is the part you probably see most of. I do, I currently do a lot of our content updates on our website for both Disney World and Universal Orlando. Um, so I, I do a lot of that stuff. Um, I handle a lot of our travel stuff. Um, I... Um, I will write occasionally for um, some of the unofficial guides. Um, I, I helped uh, write a lot of stuff for the unofficial guide to Washington, D.C., actually, because I, I used to live and work in, in Washington, D.C. for a while. So a, a little bit of everything. I would say my most important job, other than, uh, you know, talking to you guys, is uh, probably all the content stuff. It, uh, it, there is a lot that changes at Disney and Universal, so keeping up on that is certainly um, certainly a, a lot of work I am finding out. <laughs> that is something I have more recently been, uh, been handling. So no, I just got a one up. That's my, uh, my text alert. So, uh, um, let's see. Kelly asked, do we provide a touring plan for the not so scary Halloween party? And with the lines app have wait time for the characters. We do have a, a touring plan that, um, and one of the things I'm going to do when I'm there this year is, is review that. Um, the Lines app will have wait times for the attractions, but not the character meets. The problem with the character meets, and this is a problem with character meets in general, not just for this, is they don't post wait times. And uh, we can time the waits, and we have, but um, most character meets, the way they work, and this is a little bit behind the curtain, so, um, you know, any any kids maybe, you know, earmuffs, but um, the Character meets that do post wait times, things like uh, meeting Anna and Elsa, meeting Mickey in, in the Town Square Theater. They have uh, earmuffs, multiple rooms in those. So the meets go on continuously. It's why they can post wait times. There is never a time where someone is not meeting. The other meets, which is how they handle the meet and greets at the Halloween party, they're the characters, you know, they have to take a break. 
So they will meet for say, you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes out of every hour, and then take the other 10 or 20 as break time where they will just, you know, go in the back, you know, Goofy's got a pee sometimes too. So the problem with, with mapping out those is that if you get in line 10 minutes before a break happens and then have to wait 20 minutes for that break, they don't dump the line every time. So you will be waiting a minimum of 30 minutes in line, but for 20 of those minutes, the line isn't moving at all. And then the line will start moving again. That is very tough to project from a statistical point of view because there is on off time and it, it can be done uh, and we've tried, but they haven't been as accurate as we uh, like them to be. Uh, we have a, a fairly high standard for accuracy with our wait times and we just couldn't get it up to, to that kind of accuracy. So we don't model any of the character meets right now, including the ones at, um, at the, the Halloween party. So that is why none of those appear in the lines up. And it's why um, general meets, things like meeting Merida in the Magic Kingdom don't appear. That's how, how she works. But things like meeting Anna and Elsa do appear in the lines up. So Ali asked, do touring plans do a podcast? Thank you. You are setting me up for a wonderful plug. We do have a podcast. Uh, Angela Dahlgren and I, the one who, who usually is is on these with me. Uh, we do have a podcast. It is called very simply the Touring Plans Podcast. Uh, we have only about 11 or 12 episodes out right now, and um, we are just getting going. We have had uh, master statistician Fred Hazelton on from Touring Plans. We've had Aaron Foster, who is a former mom's panelist and co-author of several unofficial guidebooks, including Disney Cruise Line and the uh, Color Companion, unofficial guide, Color Companion to Walt Disney World. Um, and we will be having our boss and and savior Len Testa on very soon to talk about some some uh, great things. Um, so check that out. It is only available on iTunes right now, although that reminds me, I even have my note right here written down that I have to add that to things like Google Play and Stitcher. Um, and I should do that while I'm thinking of it. Um, Alicia, point, Alicia points out, don't forget, I get to do fake surprise as my job. That is one of the intros to my top five videos uh, that everybody enjoys. In fact, I'm thinking of filming a new one next time I'm there um, that is just all fake surprise over and over again just for fun. Um, and uh, I, I, because I, I do, I, I enjoyed that. I, I attempted to go with um, the story behind that. I attempted to shoot an intro that was like an 80s sitcom or 90s sitcom where it was kind of corny music and I introduced myself by going, and it came out so corny and that was the only part I actually filmed of it that I just decided to use it as, as fake surprise. Um, but I might just do that for, for all of them. Um, all right, I think this is going to be the last one because uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not. My voice is starting to get raspy. I shot a video right before I did this. Um, you'll never guess what it is. It is definitely not a map video about Islands of Adventure that is um, behind my head. But um, so Ruth asked, is there a specific Wizarding World of Harry Potter touring plan? Uh, I'm ending on this one because I can loop it back in for those that didn't see that Angela and I are doing a full Harry Potter film rewatch starting next Thursday. We are going to do all of our discussions about the films, how they relate to the books, and what you can see in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Universal Orlando. Angela has not visited the Wizarding World yet, and I see that she is watching, which is one of the reasons I'm talking about it. And uh, next Thursday, we are starting with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. We will do them all right here on Facebook Live, and they will be posted to YouTube later. So if you want to join in the discussion, watch along with us. We will be only spoiling the movie and related book we are talking about. We will not spoil ahead. So if you haven't seen them, this might be a great chance. It is going to go through mid-August, which is when I will be next at The Wizarding World of Harry Potter shooting more videos. So um, we do not have any specific touring plans for The Wizarding World, but you can create them. We have touring plans for both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida um, that, of course, include Wizarding World stuff. But um, we do, but I do not believe, actually, you know what, I'm going to, while I'm saying that, I'm going to check it out because um, we may in fact have a park to park um, Wizarding World one in here somewhere. 
Uh, we have so many touring plans pre-made, even I don't know what all of them are. But the very least, what you can do, uh, you can go into our personalized plans and make one yourself. You, you can't make one plan that covers both parks, unfortunately, but what you can do is set the arrival time, set the departure time, so you can start at, say, Islands of Adventure in Hogsmeade with the early entry there if you are staying at Universal Orlando. You can do Forbidden Journey. You can do the, um, the, the Flight of the Hippogriff. You can enjoy Hogsmeade. Then you can take the um, Hogwarts Express, uh, which I just put up a video on YouTube about yesterday, in fact, uh, the reverse journey, though, from London to Hogsmeade, because that's the way you have to go, right? Uh, and I'll probably do the reverse journey at some point later, or Angela might when she's there. And, uh, and then you can start a new touring plan for Universal Studios Florida using your start time as the arrival time from the Hogwarts Express, and then add all the Diagon Alley stuff in there. Uh, that is, is very easy to do. And, um, and it's just one of the things, and you can optimize both of those, either do them in the right order. Uh, it is not hard to see everything in both Wizarding World sections in one day. You, of course, do need a park-to-park -park ticket to do it because they are in two separate parks. In fact, just to ride the Hog Hogwarts Express. I always want to say Hogsmeade there. Hogwarts Express, you need a park-to-park -park ticket because it travels from park to park. Um, and that is going to do it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. Come back next Thursday where, where Angel and I will be talking Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Heck, even if you're not a huge Harry Potter fan, it will mostly be me talking about how I don't love most of the Harry Potter movies, but I love the books. And Angela being... Uh, maddeningly positive as usual. Bye, everyone. Be excellent to each other.